service, the wonderful preaching of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. We are a Pentecostal church, hand clapping, foot stopping, tongue talking, church of the living God. So sit back and rejoice with us as we worship the Lord and in spirit and in truth. Will he's 
something this week and I want to share it with you. In the book of Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11, the Lord said, for I know thy thoughts. Yes. Come on. He said, I know what you're thinking of this morning. Amen. And I know that some of you are not praising me like you should be. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Come on. I know your, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Amen. To give you an expected end. Meaning hope in your latter end. Hope is on the way. I said hope is on the way. I said it's coming, church. Amen. Let's say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah this morning. We'll have a
For yea, I say unto thee this day, my children, for I knew thee before thou was even in thy mother's womb. I knew of thee and I thought of thee. And I say unto thee, I am still here, for I am the same. I have never changed and I will not change. And I say unto thee, I am the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And I say unto thee, look to me, look to me, for I am the I am. And I say unto thee, I will give thee thy heart's desire, and I will heal thee if thou wilt just ask of me for I am the Lord thy God. Oh glory to God, I praise you.
cometh to the grave. There was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. For he hath been dead four days. And Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, come on church, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that thou hast heard me. And I know that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand, which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus has spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead <laughs> came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus said unto him, Loose him and let him go. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you this morning, but I love the story of Lazarus. Why? Because I believe that Lazarus and his situation, or you could even say his condition, and his resurrection is so powerful because it reminds us this morning that it's not over till God says it's over. Amen. Amen. I said it's not over until God says it's over. In other words, it ain't over till it's over, church. Amen. 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 It reminds us that God can do anything. It reminds us that God works in the darkness. Yes. It reminds us that 
Man, men, impossibility, men's impossibilities are God's opportunities. Amen. Praise the Lord this morning. It teaches us that God is not glorified by our sin or our sickness or diseases. He is glorified by our deliverance. Come on, our healing, yeah. our freedom, our resurrection, and our salvation. Come on. Yeah. God's not glorified with you being sick this morning. Yeah. He's glorified when you are healed and touched by the Master's hand. Yeah. 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 And I want to talk to you this morning about hear the voice of the Lord Amen. and come forth. Come forth. Amen. Heavenly Father, I come this morning in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you, dear Lord, for who you are. I want to thank you for what you've done. I want to even thank you for the souls that's been touched this morning. Yes. And Lord, we're believing it. We're believing it together this morning. They are made whole. They are healed. Yes. And we thank you already. And we just give you the praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. We read here that the word comes to Jesus that Lazarus is sick. But Jesus, what does he do? He waits two days to respond. How many wanted God to move yesterday? Hello? Well, you got one more day yet. He's coming. <laughs> Amen. But he waits two days. It could have been just as easily been 12 years like the woman with the issue of blood. Yeah. Or 38 years like the man at the pool of Bethesda. Mm -hmm. Come on, are you hearing me? The point is, church, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how long. It doesn't matter how, how wrong or how strong it is. It is all the same to Jesus. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter if my wife been coughing for a month and a half over her allergies, or Sister B being sick, or Sister Dorothy. Amen. The doctor says you you got this, but the Lord says I got something else. Amen. Come on, He don't look at her differently than He looks at her. Sickness is sickness. Amen. Amen. And God glorifies not over sickness. He glorifies over the healing of the bodies of them. Yes. So it doesn't matter what the situation is. God's still in control. Amen? Yes. If you got a toothache, He's still in control. Yes. If you got a backache, He's still in control. Yes. If the doctor says you got cancer and you ain't got long to live, God's still in control. He may be a couple days late, but He's coming! Yes. I said He's coming! It's just the same. It's the same power that heals a headache that drives out cancer. Amen. Amen. Come on. It's the same power that comes out of your body. It is the same power that heals a pulled muscle that drives out demons. Oh, come on, church. After two days, Jesus finally says, now, let's go wake Lazarus up. Alright, let's go wake him up. Jesus is even reluctant to speak of Lazarus as dead. Huh? Come on. He didn't say, let's go wake up the dead man. He said, let's go wake him up. He's sleeping. <laughs> Come on. As far as God's power is concerned, there's no difference. Amen. Just hear the voice of the Lord and come forth. Amen. Huh? Let me remind you today that your case is not too hard for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen? It may be hard for your doctor. It may be hard for doctors. But I know another doctor. Yes. I know Jesus. Amen. He will take your case. Amen. Come on. If the doctor says there's nothing we can do for you, Jesus says, get out of the way. This is mine. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Never give up, 
church. Never give up. Jesus is the healer. Another thing this story shows us is He's never too late. He's never too late. He never give up, never quit. Never quit praying. Oh boy, I shouldn't have said that. I was just handed a piece of paper last Sunday. Said, so keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Amen. Come on. Don't give up. Keep praying. If my sickness is still in my body, keep praying. Keep believing. We give up on Susan when the something comes our way. We want to throw in the towel. We want to give up. Come on. You've been saved how long? Amen. Don't give up. He didn't give up on you when you was a sinner. He still loved you. Amen. Don't give up on believing that God can heal. Amen. Amen. Never quit believing. Because you're closer than you think. Yep. Huh? You're on the edge of a miracle. Amen. Yes. Amen. Huh? But no... Pastor, we want to throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. We give up. But your miracle may be tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Huh? Come on. He waited two days. Waited two days. The story also shows us sometimes God delays. Huh? In answering our prayers. Why? Why does God delay? So God alone gets the glory. Oh, yes. Huh? We want to get the glory. So God sometimes says, I'm going to delay your healing. Because I want to get the glory. Amen. Huh? Come on. We want to get the glory. So sometimes God has to delay. <laughs> oh Lord we don't like delays do we yeah. mm -mm, we wanted it yesterday my daddy said I wanted it yesterday and it should have been done yesterday Amen. now for many years the church has used this portion of scripture to refer to what they have called the Lazarus generation because Lazarus represents a hopeless cause, an irreversible situation, a condition beyond repair, that which has gone beyond the hope of no return, and that from which all natural evidence is dead and buried. There's no hope. He's dead. He's buried. It's over. That's what, that's what is meant when they rolled the stone across the door. It meant that it's over, it's past, it's decided, it is what it is, and it's never going to change. Huh? That's what the church says. As soon as they put the stone in front of the road in front of Lazarus, it's over with. It's done. Everything's gone. Huh? Well, I don't know about you. They don't know the man I know. Amen. Huh? Amen. But I feel something pushing me here. Because uh -huh. you can't refer to the story of Elijah and end up at the tomb because the whole message of Elijah is a one of redemption, of resurrection, of healing, holiness, and deliverance a message of hope. I believe this morning that what they were thinking of is wrong. The message, the story of Elijah is hope. That means what he can do because I know I read him there. I'm not a respecter of a person. What he's done for one, he will do for the other. So, here, at the voice of Jesus, Lazarus is raised from the dead and the end becomes a new beginning. Where death had reigned, 
life begins again. God is not finished with you. Huh? Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Come on. You may look dead. You may act dead. You may look like you're beyond hope. But at the sound of His voice, I said at the sound of His voice, come on, bound is set free. Hey, come on. At the sound of His voice, demons are cast out. At the sound of His voice, hopeless have hope. Come on, church. At the sound of His voice, broken healed. At the sound of His voice, captive set free. At the sound of His voice, blind and eyes are open. At the sound of His the dead is raised in death. At the sound of his voice, people are saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. This generation today is not unreachable. Amen. They are not beyond hope. They are ready for Jesus. At the sound of his voice, cancer has to leave. At the sound of his voice, coughing has to leave. At the sound of his voice, amen, toothaches has to leave. At the sound of his voice, backaches got to leave. At the sound of his voice, come on, church. At the sound of his voice, he's in love come forth. At the sound of his voice, things will happen. But the answer is not in religion. It's not in philosophies or traditions or a man. It's not in ideals or churchianity or these semi-religious songs where there is no difference between singing to a girlfriend and singing to Jesus. Just like Lazarus, they must hear the voice. Amen. John 5 and 25 says, Verily I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. The sad thing, the sad thing today is that there are not many places where Jesus' voice is being heard. We're hearing all kinds of rap doctrine. We're hearing all kinds of self-help garbage. We are hearing about life teachers or life coaches. We don't hear very much pure and simple, undiluted, unadulterated preachers of the gospel anymore. We must hear His voice. We must, when Lazarus hears the voice of Jesus, he is resurrected. Yes. Amen. When the generation hears the voice of Jesus, they will also be resurrected. Yes. Amen. They might, they might raise, rise from the dead with green hair. They might rise from the dead with tattoos all over them. With piercings all over their bodies. They might even rise from the dead not sure if they, they are male or female. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Come on. But the church has to be ready. I said the church has to be ready. We have to have enough of the love and compassion of Jesus to look past their faults. Come on, amen. Come on. And equip them for their destiny. Come on, church. I'm not talking about endorsing all of this weird stuff. I'm talking about loving the person enough to deal with the weird stuff. In order to help them into their destiny. Now I'm going to take the story to another level. You might want to check your seatbelt this morning. 
and make sure you're buckled in. We're going to go for a ride this morning. Amen. Amen. I believe that we were, if we were honest about it, we can see that Elijah also represents the generational church. Yes. We are living it today. Lazarus represents the church that has fallen asleep. Yes. Amen. Come on. Spiritually lifeless. Yep. Dorm do dormant. Dormant. Shut in. They're powerless. Yep. Lazarus was sick before he died. Yep. Amen. 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 That means the church has become sick. Yes. She has become sick by missing with messing around with the world and the spirit of the worldliness has poisoned the church today. They're allowing every false doctrine to come into the church, trying to grow a church by bringing anything. Let's get back to the sound doctrine and preaching the word of God under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Sin is poison. And sin has poisoned the church. Sin kills. Sin steals. Sin destroys. Sin weakens. And sin makes us cowards. And sin poisons. But the Bible said in Proverbs 28 1, the wicked flee when no man pursue, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Sin separates us from God. Amen. Sin robs us of our power. Lazarus was sick. And by and large today, the church is sick because of sin. Isaiah chapter 1. Verses 5 and 6 six says, Why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even unto the head there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and purifying sores. They have not been clothed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. He whom thou lovest is sick. Listen, God still loves the church. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. He still loves the church. He still loves the church. Gambling, social drinking, fornication, adultery, pornography, homosexuality, perversion are poisoning our churches. Yes, amen. 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 It is poisoning our churches. If you want to know why the church today, if you want to know why the church today for the most part is powerless, it's because it's been a drinking, been drinking poison. And deadly poison it's been drinking. And here's the part that really bothers me. It's how many Christians are watching these sex charged sitcoms yeah. on TV. Men kissing men and women kissing women and justify it by saying it's just comedy. Yeah. Yeah. And they're just actors. Yeah. I don't care what they are. That's right. If you're watching that, there's the altar. Yeah. That's right. And then they watch movies that glorify sexual domination and perversion. Like I said, we pray for Brother Tim's grandson. It's happening at the age of five. It's happening in preschool. Are you hearing me? And we think it's all right. Well, that's just part of the school. No. Huh? We had a daughter come home and tell her mom, this is what they want me to read. Her mom said, no, you do not have to read that. And she had to take something else. Because we took a stand. Are you hearing me? But no. The church, come on, I love you. 
We don't have no backbone anymore. Huh? Sadly, the kids are controlling the parents. I tell you what, if I acted like some of the kids act today, oh, amen. I know where you're going with this. I would probably be alive today. Huh? The time that my daughter, I told this story, I'll tell it again. I'll probably tell it another thousand times yet. She came home and she was only in the third grade and she said, Dad, my teacher told me to tell you, you can't with me no more. I said, I'm going to tell you what. You go up and tell your teacher, I'm going to whip you anytime you deserve it. And if she don't like it, tell her I'm going to come up there and whip her. <laughs> huh? But no, we're afraid to even say a word to back to our kids, our grandkids. Huh? Because we have allowed the world to dictate what I as a parent is supposed to do. Amen. No. I go by what the Word of God Amen. says. Amen? Amen? And if my child deserve a spanking, they're going to get a spanking. Whether you like it or not. Amen. But no. Where am I going with this? I don't know. Let the Lord take all of it. Here. We are watching everything. Or maybe we'll go to the casino and gamble all night and maybe have a couple of beers and a few shots of liquor then come in on Sunday and raise their hands and sing worship songs and wonder why they don't experience the glory and the power the rest of the week. I'm afraid that we're coming, becoming the people Jeremiah was speaking about in Jeremiah 6 and 15. It says, were they, uh, were they ashamed when they committed abomination. No. They were not ashamed at all, neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall when I visit them, when they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Huh? And the people in Malachi 3, chapter 3, verse 14, 15, Ye have said it is vain to serve God, and what profit is he, is it that we have kept this, His ordinance, that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the proud happy, yea, they that work wickedness are set free, yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. You may not hear those exact words, but in this in the message that is coming from many pulpits today, what are they saying? I'm telling you that the church is asleep. Yes. yes. The church is asleep, and many would even go as far as to say the church is dead. But the good news is that Lazarus was raised from the dead. Amen. Amen. Even though he had been sick and he'd been dead, that wasn't the end of the story. God still loves the church and there is still hope for the church. Amen. From a human perspective, a natural perspective, when they rolled the stone over in front of the cave, that was announcing it's over. A finish. It's finished. It's done. There's no possibility of any change. Forget it. Forget it. You don't need to pray anymore. Don't fast anymore. Don't confess the promises anymore. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> Forget it. How many? I can speak for myself and I can speak for my brother Ray. How many are glad right here today, this morning, that somebody didn't let it go? Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. And we have prayed, Bobas. 
and didn't give up on us. Didn't give up on us. Kept on and praying. Even when we were in our darkest days down in the valley of sin, God, help us. That when nobody quit, they didn't give up on us. It may look like it's in, but it's not the end. It's not over until God says it's over. Somebody kept confessing God's promises. Our mamas kept saying, Brother Randy, your word, God says, you would save my household. Huh? Somebody kept on believing. I'm talking to somebody right now. You were just like Lazarus. You were dead, stinking in your mess. But God's didn't write you off. You did everything you could to roll the stone in front of the door. But God, God loved you too much to give up on you. God loved you when you hated yourself and everyone around you. He came right up to your stinky cave and called your name out and said, God, for that He loved you that much. Amen. He came right into your mess. Huh? God is not afraid of your mess. Amen. Mess doesn't stop God's love. Mess won't stop God's power. Some of you may be in a mess right now, but Jesus is right here. Huh? Calling your name out. Some of you may feel like you've been you've gone too far. You've done too much. You can never be saved or you're never going to be free. But that's why this story is in the Bible. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. To show you the resurrection power of Jesus. Amen. To show you His love, His power, and to show you that His love His power is greater than any stone that sin has rolled across your life. And try to rock your future. His love, His power will come to you right where you are today. Yeah. It doesn't matter. The Holy Ghost will come to you and Jesus will call your name. The church, like a Lazarus, like Lazarus, is loved by God. And also, like Lazarus, the church has become sick. Spiritually sick, lukewarm, indifferent, <coughs> materialistic, carnal, worldly, and they are poisoned by sin. The easy thing to do is just to roll the stone over in front of the cave and say it's over. Huh? It's over. It's done. The church world is dead. She's lost her power. She played the harlot and now she's dead. She has no anointing. She has no authority and no power. Just like Samson, she has laid her head in the lap of Delilah. And like Samson, while he slumbered, he was shaven and shorn of his power and didn't even know what happened. Then they found him, they bound him, they poked out his eyes. But again, that's not the end of the story. Samson's hair began to grow again. This speaks of new consecration, a repentance of resurrection power, and Samson killed more Philistines in one hour of his death than he killed through the whole entire lifetime. Lazarus, come forth, Jesus said. There is a call going out to the slumbering church. Come forth. Jesus is telling the church to come forth. Amen. Wake from the seducing spirits that have lured you to sleep. Wake you from the sleep of worldliness and pleasure seeking. Wake up. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. A lot of people have written off the church. 
They say the church is no longer re re relevant. They say the church is dead. They say the church has no power. They say it's just a religious institution. They say it's just dried up old bones. But I come to tell you, something is getting ready to happen. In fact, it's happening right now. All over the world, people are hearing the voice of the Son of God. Yes. All over the world, people are hearing the voice of Jesus Christ. All over the world, they're hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. All and people are waking up and they are coming forth. All over the world, the dry bones are hearing the word of the Lord. Yeah. The wind of God is blowing through the valley of dry bones and through the tombs. And resurrection power is here. The church is, is returning to the book of Acts, to the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Jesus is not coming for a beat up, bruised up, broken down, dried up, lukewarm, half in, half out. Can't tell the difference between the church and the world. He's coming back after His bride. Amen. Amen. He's coming for a holy, separated, consecrated, fire baptized, Holy Ghost anointed, without spot and without wrinkle, victorious, overcoming, and conquering bride. And the one that's going to hear is the voice of the Lord. Just like the children of Israel went out of Egypt with a high hand, the church is going to come out of this world with a high hand. Yes. Can you hear the voice of the Lord today? To come forth in resurrection power, to come forth in divine health, to come forth in holiness and righteousness, to come forth in a fresh anointing, to come forth in a greater authority, to come forth victorious. In other words, the Lord is saying to you and I this morning, hear the voice of the Lord. Huh? We need to bury our faces. We need to bury our face in our hands and cry out to God. To hear His voice like our lives depended on it. Because they do. We must hear His voice. The church is being called out to come forth. Yes, man. The church is, uh, is walking, waking up, and we're coming forth. We're coming forth with a fresh fire. Why? Because we're going through the fire. Huh? We're coming forth with a new zeal. We're coming forth with a new passion for holiness and clothed with a new mantle of might and power, resurrection power. We are coming forth today. We need to hear the voice of the Lord. And when He says, come forth, we got to be ready. But the church is dead. Church world today. I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about the church world. They got Jesus. They got the Spirit outside looking through the doors. They won't invite Him in. I want God's presence in this house. Amen. I want when He you come in here, you feel the power and the anointing of God. Not because I'm here or my wife or anybody else, but the presence of God is here. Why? Because we're prayed up, ready to go. Amen. Amen. Come on. No foolishness around. Amen. Come on. Amen. This is serious times. The time is running out. The hourglass has been tipped. Come on. The time is running out. We as born again believers, we got to bury our faces in our hands and, and cry out to God and say, God, I want to hear your voice. What rose Lazarus from the dead. The voice of the Lord. Huh? When he said, come forth. He didn't say, let's go wake up the dead man. He said, let's go wake up Lazarus. He sleepeth. So is the church. The church is sleeping. It needs to wake back up again. Huh? I want that same anointing that when I was at Evie's age, I seen them shout all over the church. I seen them praising God all over the church. I seen blind, I've seen a leg grow this much right over there in a little town called Bayonne. They put 
that lady up there on that table, and she had a heel about that long, was somewhere there like that on one shoe, and they took that off. You can see it. And I was a little boy like him, and I'm looking back. I was curious as can be. That's why they called me Curious George. You get that later. But I was curious as can be, and church as God is my witness. I saw that leg a move, amen, and it got the same lip as the other one. That's the same power that's inside of you and I today. It's that resurrection power, and we need to hear the voice of the Lord. And when He says, Come forth, we need to be ready. Yes. And all Lazarus said, or oh, all Jesus said was, come forth. Huh? And they rolled the stone away. He didn't stink no more. Huh? He probably woke up and put his right guard <laughs> right right on. Slapped a little bit of Old Spice. <laughs> See, yeah, back then, that had been Old Spice. Old Spice. <laughs> he said, all right. Huh? I don't speak no more. Come on. I'm going to take it even a little lower right now. When you and I were in sin, we stunk. My, you might have had all the cologne on you wanted. You could have had all the uh, 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 underarm uh, you wanted. But spiritually, you and I, we stunk. Huh? Because we had sin in us. Sin stinks. Come on. And when they, was it Mary or Martha, I can forget, said, you're too late. Right. <laughs> He's been dead for four days. He's gone. It's done. <clears throat> huh? Jesus ignored her. So you're looking at the resurrection. Man. Come on. It's time for the church to come forth. It's time for the church to be the church. Amen. Because the church is dying. Oh, but Pastor, I put on there running thousands in church. Good. It's a dead church. Though. They're not preaching the gospel. Jesus Christ to him crucified. Come on. God help us. God help us. I don't want to be dead. I want to be alive. I've always pictured that church when you're walking in and you see crutches and wheelchairs and all kinds of doctor mechanics and stuff that they put on people where God healed them and they hung them up. Amen. And people just look at it miracle after miracle after miracle. And you know what? All we got to do is open up the Word and we'll read miracle after miracle after miracle and know that God is still on the throne. If He can raise Lazarus from the dead. And he loves the church so much. He can still resurrect the church in the last days. Amen. I believe we're going to see an outpouring like we've never seen it before and experienced it like we've never experienced before. And I believe it's going to come right in here. Huh? Yeah. Right in here. We may not be in this building, but in this church, His power is coming in. His resurrection power. You got to. How hard is it to remember that same resurrection power that raised Jesus up from the dead, same resurrection power that raised Lazarus from the dead, lives in us? Yes. Amen. Amen. Huh? lives in us. We've got that power. All we got to do is listen to the voice of the Lord and be used by God. Hear the voice of the Lord and come forth.
That's why Lazarus did. They had it wrote off. He was done. It was over. Gone. Let's be on our way. Go about our business. But Jesus said, it's not over until it's over. The Lord's got the last word. Huh? Sorry. When He says, I'm done with uh, Pastor Gerald, I'm taking him home. It's goodbye to you. Hello, heaven. But God's got more work for all of us to do. And He's talking to the church today to come for it. Well, we pray that you truly enjoyed that worship service and the wonderful preaching that we bring to you, Jesus Christ and Him crucified, the message of the cross. But I'd like to ask you a question. If there's any doubt at all in yourself whether you would die today that you could would meet Jesus in heaven, I would like to say this little sinner prayer with you and have you repeat it with me today if you would. It's just words, but if you will say it and mean it from your heart, you will have no doubt after you say this. So just say this with me this today, if you would, please. Repeat it after me. Dear God in heaven, I come to you today asking you to forgive me of all my sins. I believe Jesus suffered and died and rose again for all. I am accepting Jesus Christ into my heart to cleanse me and make me whole. And now, by faith, I believe I am saved. Amen. If you said that little simple little prayer, Hey, angels in heaven today are rejoicing. But we would like to let you know that if you have any prayer requests at all, that you can go onto our website, victoryofthecross.org, and go to the place where it says prayer request. Or if you have anything at all you'd like for us to, to pray about or you want to share with us, go on there and we will definitely find it and read it and we'll pray about it with you. So, again, I pray that you enjoyed this, and we hope to see you again the next time we come back to you. God bless you, and thank you very much.